Hi, Philip Hinkle here from ProDad. We're back today with a tutorial for the new ProDad Mercalli V4 stabilizer and the CMOS fixer plugins for Adobe Creative Cloud 2017. The plugins work in both the Windows and Mac versions of Premiere Pro and also After Effects. You can get the plugins individually or as part of the Mercalli V4 suite for Adobe that includes both plugins and the ever popular Mercalli V4 SAL Plus for Windows or the new Mercalli SAL Max standalone application that has a little more power than the plugins for really messed up clips. For those of you who have the Mercalli V2 plugins, there won't be a CC27 plugin because we've stopped developing the V2 product, but there are some good upgrades available into Mercalli V4, and that will be the best path forward. Well, enough of that. Let's get started and see how this works. Okay, here we are in Adobe CC 2017 Premiere Pro. We have a clip here of a bike ride I did recently. Um, it's the finish line coming into the finish after 150 miles in two days. And you can see there's some shake and some CMOS problems going on there. We are going to work on that here with the plugin CMOS Fixer and Mercalli V4 plugins for Adobe Premiere. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is grab our filters. They're over here in our effects bin. And if we come down we can see in the ProDad folder we have a CMOS Fixer and Mercalli V4. I'm going to take both of those, I'm going to drag them over to my clip, and we can now see that they are available right here in our effect controls where we're going to work on those. I think I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to work, so I'm not going to have a lot of tracks, so I'm going to expand that down that way and make my timeline a little smaller. All right, let's get to work. First thing we need to do is make sure our CMOS Fixer is before Mercalli V4 in the hierarchy of our filters. That's very important. So always make sure CMOS Fixer is on top. We also see over here analysis required. I'm going to turn off Mercalli right now because first we have to do some processing with CMOS Fixer before Mercalli can do its thing. So first let's turn that off and let's start working through some of the options. First in CMOS Fixer is the rendering option. Under the method there's three options precise, fast, and quick repair. I normally use the precise GPU. It takes a little longer but the success and quality is usually a little bit better because it's working harder. There's a remap mode and avoid border. I always leave those as the defaults because they seem to do a really good job at that. So I'm going to minimize that so we can see more. And here's our sensor option. What we need to do is let CMOS Fixer figure out what's going on with the CMOS sensor and the video that's being recorded. So what we have to do is set the sensor speed. To do that, I click on the Estimate button, and you can see it will do some processing. I'll pick you up when that's done. OK, that is complete. And you can see it picked up a sensor speed of 1.2. Now, if we wanted to, we could preview our footage. And there's optional ways to preview it. We could view the result. We could view it in a horizontal compare. And we could view it in a vertical compare if we wanted. If we put it in the horizontal compare and I hold my arrow key down to see it advance, you can see the right side has calmed down some of those shakes and wobbles that are evident on the left side. So I'm going to go put my cursor back at the beginning. I want to stay on a view result for that one. That's really all that you need to worry about in CMOS Fixer. But this has to be done before we can embark on the Mercalli journey for the rest of the full processing of the full suite of products. So, all right, so let's move on to Mercalli. I'm going to unhide the Mercalli filter, and as you can see, it's going to tell us we need analysis on our video. So what we're going to do is go down and explore some of the options before we analyze the video. First thing under camera is there's different kinds of stable cams. I usually select the universal camera. It's kind of a good all around. There's other options here if you want to try some of those. My experience has been most of the time the universal works really well. Now here's a trick and here's something you need to know. So remember this one tip. Because we are working with rolling shutter in the CMOS fixer, 
and fixing those problems, we need to uncheck it here so Mercalli's not going to go back and try and figure something out with rolling shutter issues. So that needs to be turned off because CMOS Fixer has done that for us already. So always make sure if you're using them together to deactivate the rolling shutter. The next thing, and this is a big key in the stabilization part, is the type of camera optics you are using. As you can see, there's a bunch of different cameras that we have profiles for. These profiles help it do a better job of stabilization. If I remember correctly, this camera was the Sony FDR-X1000V 4K camera. I believe I was recording that in 108060, but that is the camera I used. And I want to leave the Keep Camera Dynamic option turned on. What that does is it tells it, it tells Mercalli, okay, we want to stabilize, we want to smooth, but this camera had movement. Don't make it look like it's on a tripod. It, it should have some organic feel to it and not be absolutely rock solid steady like it's on a tripod. That just says it's a dynamic and a moving camera. Next thing we need to do before we embark on any of this other stuff in the learning process is we need to analyze our video now. So I'm going to click the analyze button and you can see it moves along pretty quick on the analyze because I've got a clip that's only seven seconds long so it won't take a long time to analyze and there we have it it is finished okay now if we want to come down here if we we could select view mode just like we did up here and we could view it in horizontal compare and you can see there is some cropping on the right side compared to the left side and you can see there's a lot less sway and movement in the right side than there was on the left side. I'm going to turn that back off for now because there's some other things I want to show you. First thing is the avoider. This is kind of like a zoom control. If you crank this number up, and you can get the sliders by clicking here, if you crank this number up, you're going to zoom in on your footage. I'm on 0.22 right now I'm going to remember that number so if I zoom in you can see that it zoomed in a little bit as I move that slider it helps with the stabilization but Mercalli is trying to find a happy balance of okay you got one spot that's really bad but the rest of it I'm going to stabilize you can use this to crop it in more and do more stabilization so leave that alone for now I will show you a trick on how to use that a little bit more in a few minutes so I'm going to turn that off so I'm going to minimize that arrow and I'm going to come down to the rendering option there's a remap mode again I always leave this one on the default and it always does a good job for me so let's just leave that there's a view mode which we've already dove into so I'm not going actually let's turn that back to horizontal for what we're going to do next next is the charts and this is where that avoid border can come in handy all right see right here where it says off if I turn on pan this is a chart for the pan tilt smoothing for panning left and right there's also one for roll and a bunch of others the three I use the most are the pan the roll and the dynamic scaling I'm going to show you the pan and the roll real quick all right if we want to we can turn on an extra high view so we can see better details now see these lines right here these are spots where Mercalli has processed your footage and it deems those as spots where if I fix those it's gonna crop your footage more than I want to okay if I come back here to my avoid border and I open that slider up if I slide it to the right you can see those red lines start to disappear okay that one red line there on the left it looks like it's not going to uh, get rid of that unless I crop it a whole lot so I'm gonna accept that one but now what I've done is I have cropped my footage in over here just a tiny bit more so Mercalli has room to react to that spike in my video that's how you use the charts I can also turn on let me turn off the avoid border come down to my advanced settings I also have charts for roll so what I do is I come back up here to my charts and I turn on the roll and you can see a similar type chart for the roll so if I take the roll compensation and I move that a bit you can see it's giving me more room to flex with that 
So I'm going to bump that up just a tiny bit from where it started. Somewhere about there looks good. That was more. If I come up here and change the chart to pan, then I can, if I want to use my slider, I can open that up and I can modify how hard it's working on pan movements in my footage. So it's working on movements this way. The roll is working on movements where it's swaying back and forth as opposed to left and right. So those are some ways you can use your charts to tweak your stabilization. I'm going to turn the charts off now so I can see more of my video. Okay, they're gone now. All right, so let's dive into some of these advanced settings. First, there's the movement. We've already covered the pan and roll and to see how they work. Okay, I'm going to minimize those and get them out of the way. The next one is the border. There's a best border, best stabilization, forensic view. Best border will do most of the time the best job. And what it does in its stabilization is it keeps black lines from showing up on the edges when you are cropping in. So maybe when you crop and it has to rotate things sometimes you'll get a black spot out here this is keeping that from happening another thing that's kind of handy to have checked in here is the video color filling so those times where it is really bad and maybe a little black spot will show up in a corner video color filling is actually taking the pixels around where the black shows up and it's filling it in so if you've got a scene with a lot of sky where it's showing up video color filling very possibly could fill that in your viewer will never know or grass a lot of times you can fill that in your viewer will never know so that's a really handy little feature scale is very similar to that avoid border it just allows you to zoom in more or less on your footage and the reason it stops scaling here is because it has reached the maximum help it can do on the stabilization so I'm going to stick it back about it was sitting on I think 45 so I'm gonna just dial that back to 40 because it looks like we don't really need all of that the dynamic scale okay let me show you with the charts again what that does the dynamic dynamic scaling and the, you can see here how it goes up and then it's lower in the corners what happens is your footage gets worse Mercalli is having to zoom in on your content and as it gets better it will slowly zoom out the dynamic scale is actually just taking and determining how fast Mercalli will zoom in and out if you crank it up too much your footage is going to pulse back and forth as the zooming is taking place if you zoom it out too little if you put the scale number too small you're going to end up with footage that could have some more bump in it because there's not enough cropping going on so that is a handy feature from time to time depending on your footage. I have used that to tweak my footage and gotten some better results from it on occasion. Let's close down the border and go to perspective. There's an x-axis compensation, a y-axis compensation, and a zoom axis compensation. Again, if I turn the chart on for x and y and click on that and turn it on, you can see there's there's a chart here that shows you how much is going on if we open that up and tweak that setting you will see some of those numbers change to try and stabilize your footage on the x-axis some more just for fun eh, let's dial that up a little bit the y-axis works the same way the zoom axis the same way feel free to experiment with those and you can learn a whole lot more about what they're doing and last is an image adjustment if you shot your footage a little off center you can rotate it which I don't need to do on this one so I'm gonna hit the reset button and put it back and if for some reason you just wanted to crop it some more to maybe get a feature out of the corner um, because it's annoying you you can use the crop function and it will zoom your footage in and out you can see that on the right side there because that's the corrected footage again I'm gonna come up here and turn off my charts because I don't want them on for the final piece now one thing I will say all these advanced settings and some of these features along here I explained these in our Mercalli v4 SAL plus tutorials 
I've done like four tutorials on Mercalli V4 SAL Plus. Three of them were advanced tutorials that dive into some of these features and show you in depth what's going on and how to use them. You may want to check those tutorials to learn a little bit more about them and you can apply some of those same techniques and some of those same theories to these options here. They're exactly the same. They're just pulled right out of that SAL app and dropped here into the plugin. That's really all there is to it. Um, if you wanted to, you could reanalyze again, but it's already been analyzed for stabilization and now we've tweaked it. The only thing is to do is to render it, which I will hit the enter key to start my render process, and we will have our footage fixed up. Okay, I've done a side by side so you can see the optimized versus the raw footage. I hope this tutorial has helped you learn a little bit about the ProDad CMOS Fixer and Mercalli V4 plugins for the Adobe. Premiere Pro and After Effects. If you're using After Effects, the filters and the functionality will look identical to this. It's just they will be accessed in a different way via After Effects. So, hope this helped you a little bit and enjoy the editing and enjoy your improved footage. Thanks and you have a good day.